Just checking that we're lying right on the back of the skull, avoiding that tendency we all have to twist the neck a little bit. Just for a few breaths here, really being in that central line and then gently closing the eyelids. Exhaling. And finding smooth and even breath cycles. And with each exhale, feel the tension flowing away, the tension from the forehead melting down into the earth. The temples flowing towards the hairline. All of the little muscles around the eyes relaxing, the cheeks, the jaw, the tongue. With an exhale, soften the ears and the throat. And with the next exhale, relax the shoulders completely, the trapezius muscles. Any effort in the arms, the hands. Feel how the breath begins to flow differently as we relax and pacify. With an exhale, relax the abdomen. Letting it pull down towards the lower back. Feeling the hips relax, the groins relax. And that softness trickling down the legs, the knees, the ankles, into the feet. Everything letting go and melting into the ground. Let there be a feeling of innocence, of humbleness in the cells. And then slowly, gently, 
Just wiggling the fingers and wiggling the toes. And emerging from that smooth, slow softness, bending the knees, bringing the knees towards the chest, allowing the eyelids to open and finding Dvipara Sutta Pavanottasa. Long, smooth inhalations and long, smooth exhalations. Keep relaxing the forehead, the temples, the cheeks. Keep relaxing the jaw, the tongue so that all of the expressions of the face are being neutralized, pacified. And keeping the right knee bent towards us, extending the left leg straight, Ekapara Sutta Pavana Muktasa. Long, smooth inhalations and long, smooth exhalations. A sort of vital presence in that left leg, the heel is firm, the muscles are wrapping around the leg bones. And changing sides, Ekapara Sutta Long smooth inhalations and long smooth exhalations. Reaching with the breath to the right heel, pressing it down, feeling the strength of the right leg, the softness of the left groin. And then both knees towards the chest again. Long, smooth inhalation. Long, smooth exhalation. Feeling that evenness, the breath dispersing everywhere, the face soft, the throat soft. And then releasing the feet to the ground. Taking a strap. Always a wonderful place to continue penetrating, getting deeper. So keeping the left knee bent in this first variation, Right foot up, strap on the foot, and slide the hands down. If the hands don't easily reach the floor and there's tension in the shoulders, you can put a bolster or a blanket to bring the floor up to you so the hands can rest on something, so that the arms can really straighten. And finding long, smooth inhalation. Long, smooth exhalation. Straightening that right leg more and more, looking at it with our eyes to check, is it really as alert as it could be? Feel the length at the back of the leg. And feel also the broadness at the back of the leg. And then changing sides. So right foot comes to the floor, left left leg is lifting. Sutta Parmishtasana, one. Finding a long, smooth inhalation. A long, smooth exhalation. Dispersing that breath. Checking with our eyes that the left leg is gripped, is sharp, is firm. That we're pushing out through the ball of the left foot. Retuning into the length of the back of that leg and also the broadness of the back of the leg. Length and broadness. And exhale and releasing. Changing legs, right leg lifting. Strap on the foot. This time the right hand holds the strap as close to the foot as possible. And the excess strap goes underneath our upper backs and is held out to the left of the left hand. Lateral Sutta Parambhushtasana. Leg coming towards us and to the right, towards us and to the right, observing movement. Long, smooth inhalation. Long, smooth exhalation. Check with your eyes what is your right leg really doing. 
Can you wrap the muscles around the belly even more, having more integrity? Can you squeeze and sharpen the knee more? Can you push out through the ball of the foot more? And what about this left hand? Is it still pulling the strap? And as it pulls the strap, feel also the broadness that it's bringing to the side ribs. And then bringing the leg back up and changing sides. So we have to take the strap out, left leg lifts, left hand holds the strap as close as possible, excess goes underneath the upper back. Preparing, examining the motion as we come down, staying connected to our movement from inside. Long, smooth inhalation and a long, smooth exhalation. Check with your eyes the left leg. Can you grip the knee more? Can you wrap the muscles around the left thigh bone even more? Can you have more alertness, the sensation of pushing out through that left foot? And with the right hand, pull any excess strap and feel how the right arm brings broadness. Go with that broadness. And then bringing the leg back up and exhaling and releasing. Both feet off the ground, crossing the right knee over the left completely. Now, very often our feet are skewed, right? So we want to try to even them up. Then we're going to reach up, hold on to our ankles. And as we come down, down, back down, we're trying to pull the outer ankles towards us. You'll feel it opening in the back of the hip, the glute, the lower back. It's a little bit different for everyone, wherever your tightness is. Connect again with your long, smooth inhalations and your long, smooth exhalations. Relax the front shoulders, relax the throat. Check that the face is still passive and neutral. And then releasing and changing sides. Left knee over the right, reaching up for the outer ankles. Trying to even out the feet. And as we exhale back, we try to draw the outer ankles towards us. Taking a long, smooth inhalation. A long, pacifying exhalation. And within the movement, within the breath, checking which parts of the body have become tense. Where have we taken on tension, knots, and release and rest and pacify them over and over again with each breath cycle. And then exhale and releasing. We're going to roll up and come sit in Vajrasana with our toes turned under. So we're stretching the roots of the toes, coming into our feet, a place that we often ignore, and yet so crucial because how do we walk on the planet? How are we stepping all day long? And how is this traveling up our legs and affecting not just the physicality of our body, but mind state? Rolling the front shoulders back, feel the opening of the sternum, long, smooth inhalation, long, smooth exhalation. Keep pressing into the feet. Bring the hands behind now to lock the fingers together and roll those front shoulders back so that you feel the collarbones lengthening. Long, smooth inhalation, long, smooth exhalation. And when you inhale, feel the sternum plate broadening, the side ribs broadening, 
And when you exhale, keep that broadness. Don't contract and get small again. And then releasing, turning the fingers towards us and pressing down into the heels of the hands. Long, smooth inhalations and long, smooth exhalations, traveling into those new areas, decongesting, bringing freedom. And then back up, hands behind the back again, changing the interlock of the fingers from the last time. Roll those front shoulders back, feel the collarbones lengthen. Have a long, smooth inhalation, a long, pacifying exhalation. And with each inhale, feel more and more lift in the front walls of the sternum and the broadness of the chest. And with each exhale, keep that lift and broadness. And then releasing one more time, stretching out the inner arms here. If you're not feeling much, you can move backwards to increase the intensity. Long, smooth inhalations and long, smooth exhalations. And then releasing. So we might need a blanket for the next one, so I'll take one for those of you who do need it, and you want to make it into a little high fold like that and just have it behind. Yoga three. We just did it on our backs, now we're going to do it the classical way. So from the hands and knees, we cross the left knee behind the right, really making sure that our knees are connecting. And then we're going to sit down and either sit on the floor or take some height. You want your knees to not be doing this. So if this is happening, take more height so you can make this connection. And now you can see the feet are askew. So we want to adjust the feet, just like we did when we were on our backs, so that as much as possible, we can read them from left to right. And now you might be feeling this area a little differently. Widen your sit bones apart. There we go. Lift these front ribs both up and the side. So we're going for liftingness and broadness. Here we go. And exhaling forward, fingertips to the floor, and begin to walk the fingertips forward, gently unfurling the head downwards. Having a long, smooth inhalation. A long, smooth exhalation. Check where there might be tension. Are the trapezius muscles hunching up towards the ears? Is the face displaying any effort? And keep dissipating that effort, moving into neutrality without becoming passive. The arms are still alert. The fingertips are still trying to move forward. Walking the fingertips back and coming forward, uncrossing the legs and changing sides. Right knee behind the left, coming to sit on whatever supports we ended up needing. Checking our feet, lining them up. And then holding the ribs with our hands and lifting them up and out to the side as we come forward with the exhalation. Sliding straight into those long, smooth inhalations and exhalations. Penetrating more deeply with the breath inside the pose. The mind following the breath, dispersing everywhere inside the pose, feeling everything, becoming more alive and alert. Check the areas of tension or little knots 
and keep pacifying them into the breath. the hands back up, coming forward, and exhale, and releasing. Coming now to Upadishta Konasana. So you may need a blanket, it depends on the groins. So if you do, you like this, and you can pile them up, make them higher. Upadishta Konasana is this. Often a tight area for people, the inner groins. So why are the sit bones apart? Make the heels firm, spread all of the toes. Now just put the hand on the pubic bone. We're going to come forward, but as we come forward, we want to try to keep the pubic bone perpendicular to the floor so that our organs aren't dropping and so the organs are moving back to the lower back and connecting inside the body, keeping the lower back supported. So here we go. Coming forward to Yogamudrasan. Connecting with our pubic bones, keeping our heels alert, our toes spread. Long, smooth inhalations and long, smooth exhalations. Coming to our maximum. Being with the breath, being with the breath cycles in the body and watching how the breath shape changes in each pose. Feeling our sit bones sharp, pressing them down onto the blankets. Feeling our legs firm, wrapping the muscles around the bones. The heels firm, the toes spread. And coming back to the pubic bone, watching its tendency to fall forward, relifting it up so that the belly button is moving backwards towards the lower back as we stretch forward. Long, smooth, soft inhalations. Long, smooth, soft exhalations. And then walking the fingertips back up and bending the knees. So we're going to come to Balakonasana next. Taking some height. If your knees are high, take height because it's not the knees that are stiff, it's coming from the hips. You have to open the hips first to start moving down the legs. And if your knees are not high, you can actually move the blanket. Just put it here. And if your knees are very low because your hips are open, you can take this blanket and put your feet on it. So you can work a little bit more. So something for everyone, adjusting for the vehicle that you're in today. We're going to come forward to Yoga Uttarasana in Balakonasana. But before we come forward, we're connecting to our pubic bones. And as we come forward with the exhale, the pubic bone is staying perpendicular and the belly button is moving towards the lower back. Having a long, soft, smooth inhalation. A long, soft, smooth exhalation. Checking that the face hasn't taken on tension. That the lower jaw is still gently hanging from the top jaw. That the root of the tongue is soft. Checking that the shoulders aren't hunching up towards the ears, that they're broad, so that the neck is relaxed at ease. Long, soft, smooth inhalation. Long, soft, smooth exhalation. Gently 
Coming back up and release. Okay, let's move our blankets and straps to the side now. We're a little more in touch with the breath, connecting a deeper layer than just the outer layers that we tend to connect to in everyday life. Let's come to our first hanging Uttanasana. So feet the width of the mat, turning the toes in and the heels out on this first one. So we're exaggerating the movement so that we can really connect succinctly to the rolling in of the thighs and the widening of the sit bones. And then arms down, taking hold of our elbows, hanging Uttanasana. Now just taking a minute to look at our feet, look specifically at the arches of the feet and lift the arches up so they're not collapsing to the ground, they're lifting up to the inner ankle. Having a long, smooth inhalation followed by a long, smooth exhalation. Watch with your eyes the inner ankle and begin to lift the inner ankle all the way up the length of the inner calf, all the way up to the inner knee. See if you can make the connection there and keep that connection. And within the context of the long, smooth breath cycles, looking at the inner knee and seeing if you could lift the skin of the inner knees all the way up the length of the inner thighs so that you feel that they're reaching the most inner groins. Exploring that awareness, increasing that sensation and making sure that the sit bones are still spreading apart. And then releasing and placing the hands on the mat, spreading the fingers widely so that right here you feel a stretch in your hands between your fingers and stepping the feet back, making sure they're lined up with the hands Pushing ourselves backward, we're finding Abhimukha Svanasana and then gently dropping the head down. Having a long, smooth and soft inhalation. A long, smooth and soft exhalation. Looking at the feet, try to spread the toes even more widely apart. Lifting the heels higher and feeling the relationship between the heels and your sit bones. The more you lift your heels, the higher you'll be able to really lift the sit bones to the sky. And this is going to help you to really access the lower third of the spine, to really lengthen and stretch right into the lower third of the spine. So keep lifting the heels, experiencing the lift of the sit bones, Stretching the arms, long, smooth and soft inhalations, long, smooth and soft exhalations. And now we're going to bring the feet towards each other. Step the right leg forward. Come onto the fingertips of the hands. Walk the fingertips back and straighten both legs. If it's really impossible to hold, take two blocks and have your hands on blocks until the legs open. And with a long, smooth exhalation, slowly lower the head down. Staying with the long, soft inhalations and exhalations. Observe the back leg. Can you press the heel of the back leg down more? Observe the back thigh. Can you roll the back thigh in as you push the front thigh back? What of the front knee? What of the front thigh? Can you grip it upwards?
And what about walking the hands or the fingertips forward so the arms are as extended as possible? Changing sides. So stepping the left leg forward and stepping the right leg back, moving the fingertips back. Having a long, smooth and soft inhalation. A long, pacifying exhalation, gently dropping the head down. Checking the back heel. How firm is it? And checking the back thigh as you roll the back thigh in more, helping the hips to really turn and face forward. And what of the front leg? Could you grip that front kneecap up, that front thigh, up the length of the femur bone even more? And within all of this, could you also lengthen the arms a little bit more, long, smooth and soft inhalation, long, smooth and soft exhalation. And we're going to step the back leg, the right leg forward, finding again Uttanasana, turning the toes in, the heels out. With your fingertips, feel the inner arches, bring more sensitivity there, and gently pull the skin of the inner arch up to the inner ankle. Keep the buttocks widening. Now pull the inner ankle with the fingertips, just bringing awareness up to the inner knee. Now bring the hands behind the legs, put the fingertips on the inner knee and gently pull the inner knee, the skin, the feeling all the way up to the inner groin. And when you get to the top of the inner groin, widen the buttocks apart. Now that our fingers have touched, we'll have more sensation. So change the cross of the arms now, holding onto the elbows, dropping the head down, having a long, smooth inhalation. A long, soft exhalation. Reconnecting with the sensation of the inner arch lifting to the inner ankle. The inner ankle lifting to the inner knee. The inner knee lifting all the way up to the inner groin as the sit bones widen apart. Check that the face hasn't taken on tension, that the eyes are soft, the ears are soft. And then gently releasing the hands, fingertips to the floor, bending the knees, pressing into our feet as we roll up and we find Tanasa. Long, smooth inhalation. Long, pacifying exhalation. Feel the front of the face, its tendency to push forward and try to instead encourage the face to move back so the entire front face is melting towards the back skull. Simplified Vikshasana. Bring the arms in front, interlock the fingers together, turn the palms out. Keep the elbows bent to start. Place the backs of the hands on the top of the head. Move those elbows back. Having a long, smooth inhalation. And with the start of the exhale, begin to push the hands up towards the sky, stretching the arms straight. Okay, 
Connect with the feet. Feel the firmness of your heels. Feel here the arches lifting too. The inner ankles lifting to the inner knees. The inner knees lifting up to the inner groins. And then bending the elbows, keeping them open as we bring the hands back down. And releasing, changing the interlock. Bringing the backs of the hands first to the crown of the head. Move the elbows back, connecting with the long, smooth inhalation. And with the exhalation, begin to stretch the arms and push the heels of the hands up to the sky. Connecting with the feet, heels firm, standing on the four wheels of each foot. Watch the waveringness and try to get steadiness there. Lifting the inner arch to the inner ankle, the inner ankle to the inner knee, the inner knee up to the inner groin, stretching the arms. And then bending the elbows, opening them as we come down, Pressing the shoulder blades forward. And then exhaling and releasing. Tadasana. Turning now to face the long edge of the mat. So we're going to start off immediately with nice wide feet. Lining them up. Turning the toes in. Lifting the inner arches. Hands on hips. Elbows back. Front shoulders back. Prasarita Parapanasana. Moving the middle buttock forward, take a long, smooth inhalation and open the chest to the sky. And with the exhale, slowly coming down, grip the legs, elbows back, front shoulders back, and fingertips on the floor, underneath the shoulders. Checking the feet, feeling the legs, widening the sit bones, having a long, smooth inhalation. A long, smooth exhalation. Trying to find those back ribs and to dig them in so the sternum is moving forward. And then with the next exhalation, slowly lowering the head, walking the hands back so they're in line with the heels and dropping the head down. Lengthening the back of the neck. Prasarita Padottanasa. Take a long, soft and smooth inhalation. Long, soft and smooth exhalation. Gently looking at your feet, making sure the arches are still maximized and lifting, that the inner ankles are lifting. Draw the inner ankles up to the inner knees and draw the inner knees all the way up to the inner groins, widening the buttocks apart. Long, smooth and soft breath cycles. Feel the shape of the breath in this pose. Where can you feel the breath inside from the depth of the pose? And then keeping the hands where they are, take a long, soft, smooth inhalation and looking up, placing the hands on the hips and then slowly emerging, elbows back, front shoulders back and releasing heels in, toes in, heels in, toes in, heels in, toes in and coming down. All right, back onto our mats with a blanket. Right here. Jalun Shirshasana. Left leg straight. And you can see that I'm moving my blanket over to the left side of the mat so that I'm going to be sitting on the corner of the blanket, which is going to help my sit bones come apart. It's going to give more sensation there. 
So left leg straight, right knee bent, and reaching with our hands, widening the sit bones apart. So feel the blanket's purpose, the shape of it right there. Turn and face the left leg, fingertips onto the floor. Take a long, smooth inhalation. And on the exhale, begin to walk the fingertips forward. Until the head can slowly unfurl. Now just lifting up the right hand and moving the right hand back to your bent leg and roll that right thigh backwards even as we are coming forward. And now place the right hand on the right hip and with the next exhalation gently push the right hip downwards anchoring the pose to the earth. And now reach with your right hand to the outside edge of the left foot or hold the outside edge of the shin if you can't yet reach the foot. And come onto the fingertips of the left hand. We're gonna to twist to the left. Take a long, smooth, soft inhalation. And a long, smooth, soft exhalation, twisting with the exhale. Connecting now and then with that back bent leg, grounding it, rolling it back as we turn and twist to the left. And then gently coming out to change sides. So we're taking our blanket, using the corner, the neat corner on the right hand side of the mat, placing ourselves there, right leg straight, left knee bent. And taking a moment to really separate our sit bones apart. Then turning to face that front leg. Fingertips to the floor, have a long, smooth, soft inhalation. A long, smooth, soft exhalation, walking the hands forward. Until the head can gently unfurl downwards. Long, smooth, soft inhalations and exhalations. Now bringing this left hand back to our left thigh, the bent leg, and roll the left thigh back, even though you're coming forward. And now placing the left hand on the left back hip, and with the exhalation, gently pressing it towards the earth. And then we're going to bring our left hand forward again, reaching for the outside edge of the foot, coming onto the fingertips of the right hand. Long, smooth, soft inhalation. Long, smooth, soft exhalation, twisting forward. Make sure that left leg is still rolling back, grounding and connecting to the earth. And re-emerging. 
moving our blankets in. Both sit bones are going to be on the blankets for Bashi Motanasan. Right at the edge, we don't want to sit all the way back because then it just becomes a blanket that we're sitting on. We want to come right to the forward edge and then with your hands reach and widen the buttocks apart so that you're placing the inner sit bones in postural openness. The legs are firm. Starting with the fingertips on the floor behind so that we can explore the essential life-giving liftingness of Dandasan. So having a long, smooth, soft inhalation that comes into the sternum plate and broadens the skin of the sternum to the right side, to the left side, as well as lifting up to the sky. And when you exhale, keeping that broadness, don't let droppingness come back in. So don't let the exhale contract and make you smaller. And now coming forward, the sternum plate still broadening and blossoming as we come forward. Long, smooth, soft inhalations. Long, smooth, soft exhalations. Dispersing that breath everywhere inside the body. Watching carefully the inner edges of your feet, are they still staying aligned? If you can reach the outside edges of the feet, we call it the outer skirting, that's great. You want to put the thumb between the big toe and the index toe. And as you push the thumbs forward, you pull with your fingers the outer skirting towards you. And feel what a difference, because normally it goes a little bit like this. So we're getting that evenness as if we were standing up in Tadasan. Long, smooth inhalation. Long, smooth exhalation. You can see your inner knee right where you are. Suck the inner knee up to the inner groin and widen the buttocks apart. So feel how even though we're sitting, the legs want to be firm and alert. Check that the shoulders haven't hunched up, that you're not shortening the back of the neck. And we'll keep softening the ears and softening the eyes so that the senses of perception aren't externalizing. They're going inwards, deepening. Long, smooth, soft inhalation. And long, smooth, soft exhalation. And then slowly emerging from our Pashimatanasa. Fingertips back onto the floor behind us, roll the shoulders back, and just take a minute to observe the mind state. Each pose has a certain effect on the mind state on the mind state. And Pashimatanasa is very pacifying and calming on the brain. Can you feel that? What does that feel like? Have a long, smooth inhalation. A long, smooth exhalation. And then release it. So we're going to open up the fronts of our thighs a little bit. A very common area of tension and aggression. It's a rajasic area, a fight or flight area. So we're going to do half Sutta Virasana. 
starting at the front of our mats, taking that right leg, moving the calf out as we bring the foot to the outside edge of the hip. And then taking a moment to press the outer skirting of the foot down into the mat. Beginning to come backwards now. And right when we're on our elbows, moving our hips and buttocks towards the front of the mat. Really important so that the lumbar doesn't catch the tension of the pose. Having a long, smooth, soft inhalation. A long, smooth, soft exhalation. Keep the front thigh pressing down to the thigh bone as much as possible. See if we can come down a little bit lower. Long, smooth, soft inhalation. Long, smooth, soft exhalation. If you are on the ground, you can lift the arms up, cross the thumbs and stretch the arms back. Having the arms stretched above us this way is going to really increase our ability to verticalize, to lengthen Long, smooth, soft inhalation. Long, smooth, soft exhalation. Notice how when we exhale, there's very often an unconscious shrinkingness. We let everything get small, we relax the arms a little bit. So going against that tendency, keep the lengtheningness in both the inhale and the exhale. One more breath cycle. And then bringing the hands back up, coming first of all through the elbow, resting on the elbow stage. And then back up onto the hands. And as we release from the pose, we're sliding this foot forward and we're stopping right here and pressing down, having a long, smooth inhalation. A long, smooth exhalation, bringing the breath into the foot, visualizing it, going between all of the little bones and into the muscle fibers, the skin cells. And then releasing and changing sides. So left leg into Vidasana now, making sure to move the calf out of the way to clear the back of the knee, bringing that foot in. And with your left hand, press on the outer skirting of the foot, press it down to the earth, so you're really making sure you're on the front of the foot. Beginning to come down, finding our elbows. And when we reach the elbows, making sure to move the hips and buttocks towards the front of the mat. Have a long, smooth, soft inhalation. A long, smooth, soft exhalation and press the front of that left thigh down. See if we can come further. You can put the left hand, just reach for the left thigh and try to press it down to the bone to have it recede downwards so it's not lifting upwards. Long, smooth inhalation. Long, smooth, soft exhalation. Bringing the arms up for those who can, crossing the thumbs and stretching the arms back. And on the next inhale, lengthen into that. Reach with the fingertips, stretch the arms, stretch the waist. Keep pressing the front thigh downwards and making sure that as we exhale, we don't lose that length, that space that we've made. And if we do, is it where are we losing it? Which part of the body has the tendency to shorten the new? So you can watch it extra carefully to make sure it doesn't. Long, smooth, soft inhalation. 
long, smooth, soft exhalation. Check that the cheeks have become tense, that the eyes are melting backwards, not protruding forwards, that the forehead is flowing from the right side down to the right temple, down to the earth, and from the left side down to the left temple and to the earth. And then bringing the arms back up, preparing to come through our first stage where we're on the elbows here. And as we begin to emerge, we're going to push into the hands to lift our hips up, draw the foot forward and stop right here and press into that. Have a long, smooth, soft inhalation. A long, smooth, soft exhalation. And release. And coming down. Feel the difference in our feet. Coming now to Sukhasana. Crossing the right ankle in front of the left. If the knees are very lifted, take some height underneath the hips to help the thighs release down. Yoga Mudrasan, first widening our buttocks apart. Having a long, smooth inhalation. And coming forward with a long, smooth exhalation. Paying attention, as we did in Upavishta Konasana and Bhadakonasana, to our pubic bones, so that we don't let the pubic bone drop, we don't let the organs drop. Keep broadening the shoulders away from the ears. Long, smooth, soft inhalation. Long, smooth, soft exhalation. And then slowly coming back up and changing sides. Left foot in front of the right, widening our sit bones apart each and every time. Placing ourselves, a little bit of our intelligence there, feeling the sit bones sharp and spread. Having a long, smooth inhalation, chest lifting, and exhaling forward into yoga mudrasana in Sukhasana. within the breath, within the pose, reconnecting with the pubic bone and gently lifting it up and feeling how that affects the organs. How the organs now are also gently lifting. How the belly button now is also gently lifting. And feeling the support that brings to the lower back as we continue to try to stretch forward, to reach forward, for the front of our mats. Long, smooth, soft inhalations. Long, smooth, soft exhalations. Keep the shoulders broad. Keep the jaw relaxed. The ears soft, the eyes soft. Gently coming back out and releasing. 
Okay, we can feel that our toes have been awakened, our feet, our heels, <laughs> our legs, our ankles, our knees, our groins, our hips, our spine. The organs have been lifted, the shoulders have been rolled back, and by pacifying the eyes, the ears, the face, we've helped this entire forwardness of daily life to recede back into a place of peacefulness. And we're going to bring that all together and rest with our legs up against the wall in a Shavasvadek Vipadita Karami. So one blanket folded up for some height underneath the back hips, coming into our walls. Adjusting, getting closer or getting further away, dependent on the backs of your legs. Rolling those thighs open like we did in our first Shavasana. And feeling the outside edges of the feet come closer to the wall. Arms extended diagonally away and lifting each shoulder up to roll the front shoulder back firmly and press the shoulder blade up so that the penetration and openness of this chest area comes from the back body. Checking that we're lying in the middle of the back of the skull. Feeling as if our eyeballs are receding backwards to the back of the skull. As if the ears are being drawn in towards each other. Have a long, smooth, soft inhalation. And as we exhale, gently closing the eyes and coming into the depth of this asana. Let the temples flow towards the ground. Let the cheeks melt away from each other and flow also towards the earth. Let the corners of the lips be soft and flow to the earth. Let the shoulders relax completely. The elbows, the wrists, the knuckles relaxing completely. Inviting the abdomen to relax completely so that the belly button is melting towards the lower back and there's the shape of a natural pool in the abdominal area as the abdomen is receding towards the lower back it's sinking making this gentle circular pooling shape And noticing that when we allow the abdomen to completely release downwards, to pull in this way towards the earth, how the groins and the legs also relax more profoundly, are able to become even more passive. Relaxing the inner knees, the outer knees. 
relaxing the inner calves, the outer calves. Relaxing the inner ankles, the outer ankles. The soles of the feet completely letting go. Now for the last few minutes that we're going to be here, Connecting with our third eye, the energetic space between the eyebrows, right in the middle between the eyebrows. And just gently inhaling and exhaling from the third eye. Now just gently moving the toes, the fingertips, the fingers, the feet, the hands. And then lifting the hands and resting them on the abdomen. Long, smooth, soft inhalation. Long, smooth, soft exhalation. Then folding the palms together in front of the chest. Ending with our loving kindness meditation. Loka samastaha sukinho bhavantu. Om 
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And that Shanti just releasing the hands. Bending the knees so the feet are sliding down the wall. Rolling over to the right hand side and using the hands to push ourselves back up. And here we are just taking a final breath cycle in Vajrasana. A moment of observation to have the mind state. Shoulders back, collarbones long, face neutral and soft, long, smooth inhalation. Long, pacifying exhalation. Just describe how you feel, three adjectives. And then just describe how the breath feels, three adjectives. Allowing the eyelids to finally open. Allowing the eyeballs to finally come forward, the ears to finally come back out in the external world, but having imbued ourselves with that peacefulness, that deep mineral peacefulness. Our practice is complete. I hope you feel amazing, graceful, expansive. I hope you'll let me know how you feel. And I hope we practice again together soon. Namaste. Take care.